Hello, welcome back to Linux Mint. We're actually going through the installation portion where we're going to kind of look at next steps on this. So we'll be looking at how, what it's going to take to actually get Linux Mint configured. We're using the same virtual box that we used in the first two videos. So everything is very much the same here. So don't worry about, oh no, what changed? This is just a continuation. So we're going to go over to the virtual machine right now. We've got the virtual machine set up and uh, this is our first boot. All we've changed at this point is we've changed it from the modern to the traditional. So we've changed the modern look over to, to the traditional look. And if there's any question on the modern look and the traditional look, then uh, I'll actually just walk through that right now. So you go to the little mint leaf, type welcome, bring up the welcome screen. As the welcome screen comes up, go down to first steps, scroll down, you can grab that little scroll bar if you want to, go down and choose traditional right there. Once you choose choose traditional, then you get your little words down there in, in the bottom of the screen, it's, it's easy to do things. Um, it's prompting me that if, uh, if I want to go through and check my video drivers that I can, I can do that right now. And uh, right now, I've actually got to go through and there. Turn off some notifications. People are already uh, contacting me about the, the other two there, which, huh. All right, so we've got this up and this video is running. I now have the basic settings done. Let's see what the next steps are. The first thing I like to do is I like to throw down a couple of utilities that I use on an everyday basis. So I grab where's the text editor. I pull it down the bottom of the screen there. I'm going to grab the calculator. Here, I'm just going to start. Okay. Calculator. I pull it down to the bottom and I add that into the menu at the bottom of the screen. I'm also uh, going to change the terminal down there. If we did have another browser like Chrome or, or something of that sort, I'd pull that down. Uh, and the last thing that we're going to pull down is a screenshot. So we can pull that down and, and throw the screenshot at the bottom of the screen. And that right with the, if you ever use the screenshot inside of Linux before, you know it's fantastic. Uh, you can click on this little screenshot here, and you say select the area to grab, take a screenshot, just highlight whatever you want to grab there. It'll copy that. You can choose to copy to clipboard, so then you can paste that in an email or whatever, or you can save that to a file, and it will automatically give you a name based on the date and timestamp there, and throw it in your pictures directory. So it's just really nice. Okay, let's move on to terminals. So a couple of things we're going to configure down here. You saw that we got the uh, the screenshot going, but we're going to start with the uh, the text editor and terminal. So the text editor is actually the fastest. I'll do the text editor first. Text editor comes up. It's a white screen. And when you're looking at an editor and it's a white screen, in fact, if you enlarge this and make that the full screen, if you're watching this video in full screen, then you can actually feel the strain on your eyes. So as you're feeling that strain, if we go through, choose the preferences, go over to our, our uh, theme, sorry, and choose Cobalt, then that dark screen, that dark theme right there, just lets your eyes relax right off the bat. So it's already relaxing, and it's something that when you're sitting in front of a screen for 10 or 20 hours a day, depending on how busy you are, then it's something that you can really appreciate. So, editor, font, I'm going to increase my font size to 13, so I'm going to go click up to 13, select. I'm going to display those line numbers, so I see the line numbers on the left-hand side. I want the right margin to appear, so I know where the right margin about is. I do want tabs. I do not want spaces instead of tabs, and I do want word wrap, and that's it. So, I'm going to close that out. So, that right there are the changes. Those are the changes inside the text editor, so now we can, uh, you know, we can, can type whatever we want whatever yeah there so we can type whatever we want inside a text editor and no so let's move on to the terminal now if you open up a terminal there are a couple of ways to do this once you have a terminal open you can hit Control shift n and it will bring you up in the same directory you were just in you can hit Control alt t and it will start the terminal for you and that will just start it on your screen which all those changes I made to, on the first first run through there, I need to make again because every window is just lapping over the window on top uh, below it and on top of it. So that's really annoying. I'm gonna have to fix that. So let's go over to the uh, the settings here. Let's go down to the uh, the windows. Click click on behavior, 
and inside of there we're going to choose automatic so we've got that automatic setting now i'm going to try to make this video as transparent as it possibly can be that's so you can see what i'm doing inside linux to make this usable and make this a usable workstation for me and i'm going to try to do it in 10 minutes or less so we'll see so we got that and uh, now let's go ahead and start a terminal open that terminal up hit Control alt t and yeah now those things are are automatically going in different places so that just really is that's really helpful now the terminal it is a uh, kind of a green and white screen by default and it's a little bit small by default so if i go through and type ll it actually you know comes up with some information there it actually shows me the hidden folders and hidden files not too fond of that you know so i'm going to change make some changes the way you change it is go to edit go down to preferences and you're seeing a um, yeah, consistent theme here. Inside of Linux, you'll almost always go, let's go over here. You'll almost go, always go to Edit and then Preferences. And so just keep that in mind that you'll be choosing Edit then Preferences on a, on a, lot, a lot of the time. Okay, initial terminal size, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a 140 there. The columns, I'll choose 32 uh, for the rows. So we've got that set up. The colors, I'm going to use green on black. So that green on black, and I'm not gonna use transparency. A lot of you are thinking, oh my goodness, you're not using transparency, why not? Hey, feel free, go ahead and use transparency. That's totally fine. Um, I don't like the transparency. It gets in my way, uh, but if I'm feeling especially hackery, then maybe I'll use the transparency. But um, I, I generally don't like the transparency because it just makes it kind of hard to read. Uh, so I, that's why I don't use it. So I'm gonna go with that and not use a transparent background and click all right you know there is one thing um i'm going to exit out of here so i'm going to alias x for exit so you see the x there when i press that it says oh, i don't know what you're talking about now if i press capital x that means comes something completely different but i'm going to alias that over but right now i'll just type exit to get out of that now there was one thing you notice that whenever i start a terminal it's got a thin white line over on the side that way you know where this one ends and that one starts Let's check out this theme, because that used to be a problem with the uh, the modern theme in 19.1. And I'm wondering if it's still a problem in 19.2, uh, or if the modern theme is just kind of what people have resigned themselves to, and and now they're thinking, well, I'm just going to leave Linux Mint anyway, so why do I care? Um, in this case, yeah, they still does. Oh, that's, well, that's just too bad. Um, so what we've got here is, let's go over this one. I'll just like LL and then I'll pop over here and I'll do it like an LL. And you'll see that uh, this is getting to be kind of annoying. I, I can't tell where one ends and the other starts. So I'll say, okay, well, I'll just clear that then and clear this. And now where's my other, uh, is it still there? There it is. And you don't know where to click. It's just a real pain in the neck. There's another reason to do away with the modern theme forever. Don't don't allow anyone to allow you to use the modern theme. If they say, oh, it's okay to use the modern theme. Say, no, no, that's just not okay. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Because <laughs> they obviously don't care about you if, if you're using the modern theme. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, switching back over to the traditional theme, we've got that set up. So now we've got the terminal set up a little bit. I'm going to just go ahead and close that out. The terminal set up a little bit. We've got our. Um, I just wiped out all my all my stuff at the bottom of the screen. It looks like, I just sure did. I flipped back and forth and lost all my icons. Um, so don't switch back and forth with those. Grab that calculator. Grab the screenshot. Grab Z, the text editor. X Ed. Pop that down there. And so let's make sure we still got our theme inside that. Good. I don't want full screen every time I bring that thing up. So good. We've got those set up now. Now I'm going to go through the uh, the basic install, the basic setup again. So going from top to bottom, we have those themes and font selection over here. This is just a little bit narrow for me. Not a whole lot. This is actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, but I'm going to click on themes. I'll go over to settings. And I'm going to choose this. I'm going to take that up to like 12. So that's not going to be a big change. And that's, that's going to be when I reboot my system now. Date and time, I definitely want it to show me the blip, the day uh, down there, the month, that kind of a thing, and the date and time. I want that to come across. As far as the uh, hot corners, yes, I want to enable hot corners. So you've got that going on there. We enable the hot corners. We The panel, yeah, there's some options. Privacy, 
I do want it to remember recently accessed files. Now, the never forget, that's an option if you want it. If not, you can set it seven days, I don't know, 30 days. Whatever you want to put it in there. Uh, screensaver. This is a virtual machine, so I'm not. I'm going to choose no, and I'll turn those off. I yeah, actually I don't use a screensaver in my physical machine either. This is running on top of a, on top of another Linux box, so yeah, I don't use a screensaver at all. <laughs> How about that? Um, but if you want to turn off your screen, if you want to do power management, that's totally cool. The screensavers though inside of a virtual machine will not help you at all. It'll just increase your CPU utilization. All right, so startup applications, that's later on. If you want to install some things like Telegram or you want to have some startup apps, you can do that. Let's go on down, and we've got our display settings. I've already fixed the display settings. The keyboard here, I'm going to grab the keyboard, increase the speed, and pop back over. We see that mouse and touchpad, if you want to change that, if you want to change the way it scrolls or anything of that sort, you can play with that here. So. For me, it's working really well, so I, I don't really want to mess with it. So I'm going to go out of that. So network, not going to mess with that. Power management, I am going to turn off power management. This is a virtual machine. And even if it was my regular machine, you have to watch out for power management. Um, I control power, the DPMS, I control through cron jobs. So we can set up some cron jobs that will turn off the monitor and turn on the monitor different at different times during the night and during the day. So if you want the power management, that's fine, or however you want to do it. And it's used my printer. Excellent. Um, get sound settings in there. We have display. And I'm going to go ahead and choose software sources. And on software sources, it's going to ask for my password. This is the machine I installed earlier, so the password is password. If I typed it right, I did not. There we go. Do I have caps lock on? I don't know if I have caps lock on. Let me find out. Nope, oh, that's password. This is where I go like, oh, great, do I have caps lock on when I... No, good. All right. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, close. These are our packages. I'm going to go ahead and select this again. And we'll pick one. I'm going to try to choose something other than Linux Mint there. Pair networks. We'll choose that one. I'll apply. And then down there on my base, I'm going to let this come up, see if I get anything about five megabytes per second or 40 megabits a second yeah, that's close enough LA mirrors maybe I didn't like them last time I will go cogent co cogent cogent company that used to be part of pair didn't it PAR based out of uh, Washington DC but okay it says do you want to update these kind of things which we'll is okay Right now it's pulling down, go ahead and open this up for you so you can see what it's doing. It is pulling down all the information in there and it's updating our repository. So it is, uh, it's done. So now our cache is up to date. If we wanted to go through and find something, we can go find something and uh, we'll be good to go. Let me close that out. So the app-cache is good. So if we want to do app-cache search and we wanted to look for Hydra then we can see that it does find our Hydra tools inside of there. If that font's too small for you, again, edit, preferences, and you can sit there and you can change it right inside of here. So custom font, change it up to 13, same as Z, and there you go. And you'll notice this is now a larger window, it's a little bit easier to use, and so, it's, uh, and so that'll be it. Hope that this has been helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, break down some different shell commands, uh, a couple of aliases that I create inside of my classroom that hopefully that'll be use useful for you. And we'll see if, uh, you know, if you wanna use those, great. Um, if you don't, then that's great too. Hope that this has been helpful. Look forward to talking to you sometime.